Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. Today what I want to do is I want to take the time and I need to tell you a couple things. First of all, uh, how do you like my new light and my new background? Now, this is just a green screen. I've had this thing for like two years. I've never used it and I thought, you know what? Today, I'm going to use it. So, I don't really know how to use a green screen that well. Um, but I'm going to start learning a little bit better and that's wrinkled like hell. I'm not really even sure if you can, yeah, I can see it in the camera. But that's neither here nor there. So, a couple things I need to do before we even really start in this video. So this video is about receptacles and why I do not push in the back. And then what I did, I took um, this receptacle and I cut it open to show you why I personally do not uh, stab in the back of a receptacle as you see right here. Now, before we start this, uh, I do want to say this, and I probably didn't have to mention this, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is the third time I've uh, done this video because simple fact that um, the first video I was so upset because I don't watch a lot of other people's electrical videos, but I did watch this one guy and it was so terrible that I've commented on it. And the first video I did, you know, I just pretty much bashed him the whole time and that wasn't very good. Second video, I bashed him again, not as much. So this time I'm not going to bash him. What I did is I deleted both those videos that will never be on YouTube land. And what I want to do is to say this. If you watch a video of anybody, whether it's me, uh, Joe Bob, the, the electrician, or whoever, um, you know, and you see something that you're not sure of, or if you hear somebody say keywords like, I think this will work, I'm pretty sure this will work, just keywords that doesn't sound like, you know, like somebody would say, yes, this is exactly how you do it. You know, kind of like I do on my channel. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm not putting any screenshots up. But if you do watch anybody's videos that has um, anything of that content, whether it be electrical, plumbing, whatever, just keep in your mind, guys, that, and girls, that um, it may not be the right thing. Because, you know, there are a lot of people out here on YouTube land um, that do videos like clickbait and just so they can get the views and that's not fair to people who really need the answers uh, I come to YouTube a lot you know I've made um, you know handicap ramps <laughs> I've cut stair treads I made my own trusses and I'm not a carpenter but I watched like probably 30 minutes worth of YouTube videos and I did all that and you know I've learned to trap I've learned just different items you know, and I try to get to the reputable people, the keto, when I, when I was doing keto, you know, I, I, I just follow those right people and, I mean, you know, anyway, let's get on with this video. So the reason why I am doing this video is simple. I had a lot of questions on several of my electrical videos and um, a lot of them were basically the same thing. Why do I feel like... Um, actually, I had a lot of different questions, but the one that really stands out in my mind and had a lot of discussion with is why do I not put a wire in the back of these receptacles when you know they sell them where you can do that? Uh, I will tell you again right here that I do not do it for the simple fact that uh, it does loosen over time. I've seen it happen numerous times when something electrical is plugged in, okay, it is continually heating up cooling down it's a vicious cycle just up and down up and down especially if you have like a little tow heater curling iron hair dryer whatever something that really pulls you know a, a crock pot you know whatever whatever it is, whatever it is that you have that pulls a lot i'm not talking about a little teeny weeny can opener i'm talking about something that pulls a lot you know and it just sits there and constantly heats up cools down contracts expands so on and so forth okay uh and you know the metal eventually wears down. That's just nature of the beast. Anything man-made is subject to failure, and I am a firm believer still yet of that, okay? And what I did is I cut this receptacle apart, and I'm going to show you uh, why I feel that you shouldn't do that. I don't care if that's the way you want to wire your house. Hey, if that makes you happy and gets you in and out, you know, so be it. But there, to me, there is a right way and there's a wrong way. And I'm not saying, you know, let's use this example right here. They're selling cigarettes, okay? A lot of people are smoking. Does it mean that's right? Absolutely not. There's always a drawback to something. And for me, you know, alcohol, drunk driving, so on and so forth. And we can go on and on and on and on and on. There's no difference in a receptacle. Now, like I said, I cut this one in half and I'm going to show you. So 
as you already do know, uh, you can stab them in the back. If you decide to do that, and you want to get the wire back out for you know whatever reason, uh, right in the back here, as you see, let's see if I can. You see right under my fingernail right there. There's a rectangle right there. That is where you would stick your screwdriver in. It's a little one, obviously, and you would push it in and you would pull the wire out if you needed to get the wire back out. This is what it looks like. All right, but I'm gonna try to get my ugly mug out of the uh, frame because it does not want to focus on this thing. But as you see, I'm gonna put a piece of wire here in a few minutes and show you. But this right here is what you have. And you can see how it's like bent at a, I don't know, it's not a 45, it's probably like a, I don't know, a 50 degree bend. And what happens is when you push the wire in that little hole right there, I'm gonna do that here in just a second and show you. It goes in and it goes up under this little bent piece and that is your tension. And when you need to get it loose, you know, you're pushing your screwdriver right here on this flat spot, which is pushing this bar back to release your wire. If you have to replace your receptacle or whatever you may do, eventually that's going to weaken. Okay, that's just the way it is. And that is one reason, well, that's really the only reason why I do not do it. You know, it heats up, contracts, expands. So like I said, it's just a vicious cycle, you know, and if you have it wrapped around your screw, when you tighten that thing down, you will know pretty much immediately that it's either going to stay in or the screw's going to strip out. There's no in between. Uh, if it's tight, it's tight. So I would much rather screw the hell out of that screw with the hook on it, as tight as I can get it, strip it out knowing that it was a faulty screw, and then I can go to the next one, and if that doesn't work, then replace the receptacle. I, I would rather know when I put that receptacle in the wall, it's a done deal. All right, so with it sitting in, as you can see a good picture now, with it sitting in the wall, when you push your wire into it, it goes right underneath this right here and it sits in there like this now I'm gonna go ahead and push it in on camera so you can see and uh, you can understand what I'm talking about all right so all I have to do is take my wire this is 14 gauge wire and push it in just like so right it's hard to do because I cut the I cut the uh, receptacle apart so all right so it's in there like you would normally do correct and that is how it looks when it's in there to me yeah, it's in there, but what happens if it slides off that little bar just a little bit? Well, you have a loose connection in there, as you can kind of see. See how it's not up against the the bar right here? This is the flat spot, and of course you can kind of see where the screw would be. So you see that little gap right there? Now, is it under there? It absolutely is. We can see that, plain and simple. Is it tight? It's pretty tight, but to me, it's still not where it should be. I mean, I can ho only hope that you guys see what I'm talking about now. I mean, you know, I can wiggle it out. You know, just if the receptacle's loose and you're pulling your plugs out of your wall, well, you know, this is going to work loose, and then before you know it, you got a, a loose wire, and then, I mean, guys, it's pretty self-explanatory, okay? This is the reason why I do not do it. Um, I also had some people ask me, well, you know, you can't put 12 under there. Well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't do it. I've seen numerous people push 12 under there. So for those people who say you cannot do it, you definitely can. All you have to do is widen that hole out a little bit. I mean, take your wires, work it in there. It's going to go in there, believe me. I don't care what you say. I've seen it. Um, I'm not trying to cause an argument between any electricians or any homeowners. I'm just letting you know I've seen it under there. And to me, still yet, it's still not a good option. So if you see real close here under the screw, there's little, I don't know if they're ridges or not. They kind of feel kind of ridgy. You know, when the wire goes on there, it kind of has like friction to it and it stays tight. Guys, I don't care what you do. That is my reasoning behind it all. I will never, even in a temporary situation, ever push them in the back. You know, I've seen people say, well, you know, I have two wires under my screws already. You know, one neutral there, one neutral there, and then... They got them stuck in the back, you know, because I I ran out of room. So I would tell you at that point, make a junction in the box, run one neutral out or hot or whatever to that screw and be done with it. I, that's all I can say, guys. I mean, you know, it is what it is, but that is my reasoning behind it. And then I had a comment about, well, you know, you say, well, GFIs are fine. Well, I'm not cutting my GFI open. 
but there is a plate inside this GFI. So right in there, see if I can get it frame. Right in there, as you can see, maybe or not, I don't know. But there's a plate. When the screw's all the way out, you can see it. And when you when I raise it up easy. Anyway, there's a plate in there. And up against that screw is another plate. And what it does, when that wire gets in there, it crimps it down. So it tightens up around it. And pretty much there's no way for it to come out. I've obviously, with anything else, I've seen it come out. But it's if you tighten it down, you crank the hell out of it, chances of it going out are pretty much slim to none. Now, you can put it around the screw. I've done, I used to do that all the time. So this is a 20 amp receptacle. And you know, and there's absolutely no places on the back to uh, stab in the back. Now, if you don't know how to figure out if it's a 20 amp receptacle by just looking at it, as you can see, right here on the very edge, there is a little, for a lack of better terms, tit on the side of it, and that's a 20 amp receptacle. All right guys, and just a quick update on what I plan on doing with my channel from here on out. Now. What I plan on doing is this. Uh, the week before Thanksgiving, uh, I don't do any more videos. Uh, I will not let any more go on my channel. What I usually do uh, during the those months, uh, into November, December, uh, I usually record some videos, actually quite a few of them, and then I'll edit all of them, and then I'll start letting them go, you know, like in February, March. I have enough videos right now to last me until February if I was to stop making them right now and just let them go. I have a lot in the, um, you know, just waiting to go. They're all edited. They're ready to go. Uh, but in those months, um, my vacation comes into play. Hunting season's here. Family time. Christmas. You know, just holidays. And I don't want me to sacrifice my family time. Uh, where I think I, oh, I got to sit down and edit because I, you know, I got to have a video. Well, luckily, usually I, I know that way ahead of time and I get all my stuff done and basically I can just stop doing what I'm doing, make a little video here and there, and it's not a big deal if I don't because I still have some for next year. So I will be doing, I said this last year, uh, electrical series uh, more in depth. I want to do four ways. I want to do uh, light conduit bending, um, you know, just basic house wiring. I have several projects I need to do in my house. Uh, I'm probably going to add a, a three gang box, receptacle box. Uh, I need to add a couple double switches. And uh, I'm putting can lights in my house and I want to record that. Uh, you know, there's just little electrical stuff. And guys, if you have an idea of anything that you want to see, now is the time to hit me up and say, hey, Mountain Air Outdoors, how about do this? Because I really need to do this. You may not get it right away, but uh, it, I will do it. Just, you know, give me some ideas. Um, and if, you know, if you don't have any, that's cool too, because I'm still going to do them. So there may come a time where in between that time when I'm not doing the videos, that something may spark my interest to say, okay, I've got to do this video. I've got to say this, you know, to get off my chest or to, you know, show you guys like some awesome product that I may have or, you know, whatever. And I may come on the video and, you know, just do one. But all right, guys, if you like what you see, like and subscribe. God bless. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day, guys.